What's the scariest paranormal experience you have ever had? Posted one day ago. I was 14, and we were living temporarily in a house before moving cities. The house for the most part seemed okay, but the furnace room always gave me weird feelings. Unfortunately for me, it was located directly across from the alcove where me and my little brother had our bunks. One night, I was woken up abruptly from my sleep. Despite not recalling any dreams, I was in a panicked state and covered in a cold sweat. I was on my side facing the wall, and I could sense something directly behind me. I couldn't convince myself to roll over to see what. The very thought of it caused my heart to race and every muscle to freeze. I squeezed my eyes shut and willed myself to fall back asleep. Eventually, I was able to drift back to under, only to be suddenly snapped back to consciousness. Whatever it was was still there, directly behind me, ominous, watching me. I couldn't move. I was frozen in place, covered in sweat and shivering. All I could do was face the wall and hope I would fall asleep again. The process repeated a couple more times before I was finally able to stay asleep. A while later, I mentioned it to my brother. He told me the same night he had also woken up top bunk. He said that he had lifted himself up to look around when a face popped up to look back at him. He hid under the covers and didn't come out until morning. I honestly cannot recall another time in my life where I have experienced such stark terror. I wasn't ill or having any mental stresses in my day-to-day -day life. It only happened this one time. I've always been skeptical of psychics, but I feel like my brother is psychic. The problem is he's severely autistic, and while he can talk, he can't express himself like the rest of us can, so it's not like I can ask him about it. There were so many times where I was thinking about something, and then he'd just say it out loud. But the creepiest one was when he woke my parents up at 4am to tell them, Grandma Smith is old and is going to die. They got a call later on that day that indeed she died in her sleep. I used to live in this old apartment complex in Hollywood. I never had any problems in the first apartment I lived in, but the second one. I would often wake up and find my apartment filled with gnats or flies, like I'd wake up, sit up, and be swatting at them. And then it was like I really, really woke up, and they were gone. I'd often lose things only to find them right where I'd been looking. The worst was this large blue tea pitcher I had just bought. I got home from the store, and after getting settled, I started looking for it to make tea. Couldn't find it anywhere. I checked my receipt and verified I had actually bought it. I looked everywhere, even stupid places it wouldn't have been. On the third pass, coming out of the back bedroom, I saw it sitting in the middle of the living room. It couldn't have been there the whole time, because I would have tripped on it, like I had literally stepped in the same spot at least three to four times. One night, not long before I moved, I was sleeping on the couch. I woke up, but you know how you're awake but you don't get up or open your eyes? I heard the buzzing of gnats and didn't want to deal with it immediately. I opened my eyes and the whole apartment was bathed in this cold blue moonlight and there was an old man standing by the couch staring at me. There were gnats everywhere. He looked like a hobo. He didn't look angry, just a little sad. We locked eyes and then he turned and walked toward the back bedroom. The gnats went with him and the blue light faded. I couldn't move or breathe for a few seconds. Once I could, I first checked the front door, which was locked. I then went to the back to make sure there wasn't anyone there, which there wasn't. After that, the gnats and flies never returned, and I moved soon after, for unrelated reasons. I used to have this reoccurring dream where this black figure with no face would visit me and try to possess me. It would typically enter my being through my mouth, and at that point, I would have no control over my dream. It would tell me to do terrible things to people, and it had a scratchy voice. The weirdest part that every time it would be inside me, I physically would feel ill. I would wake up with the same feeling, oftentimes vomiting right away. The last time this happened must have been three years ago. When I was about six years old, my mom and I lived in a fourplex apartment building. Her best friend lived below us. I would have pretty bad nightmares in this apartment and would usually crawl into my mom's bed and sleep with her. Every night, the bed would violently shake us awake early in the mornings. I didn't really think anything of it, we ended up trading apartments with my mom's friend, and we moved downstairs, and she moved upstairs, and she asked my mom if the bed would ever shake in the middle of the night. It started with a feeling of being watched sometimes. My mom was home alone with my infant brother. She was walking around burping him. 
My brother started laughing like someone was playing with him. Happened several times. My family had a dog and a cat. They used to sit side by side, staring up at the empty staircase, like spellbound for hours. When my brother was big enough to move around, he joined the cat and dog, just as spellbound as the animals. When my brother was able to talk, he was talking with the empty staircase, nodding and saying yes, no, or I will tell them, having a conversation with someone. He would then call one of the parents over and tell them weird things, not like normal kid stuff. He was telling my parents about a wire in the wall, stuff that needed fixing in the house, where to find the thing they were looking for. When they asked who told him that, he pointed at the air above the stairs and said, him. This went on until he was about five years old. My brother had a really special way to walk down the stairs, so we always knew when it was him. I often woke up during the night of the sound of him coming down the stairs and entering the bathroom. A few minutes go by and there is still no flush or sound of him climbing back up. I always decided to go and see if he needed help. The bathroom was always empty when I got there. Thinking I just fell back to sleep and missed it, I decide to check his room. I meet my mom halfway up the stairs, and she asks me if he needs help. Turns out she also heard him going downstairs and never getting back up. We check his room, and he's sleeping soundly in his bed. Happened a few times a month. When I was about 15, my two younger siblings, 6 and 5 at the time, liked to snuggle in my bed with me. This one time, I'm still in bed but wide awake. My back is to the door. I hear the door handle being pushed down and the door opens and closes again. Footsteps are coming in my direction. I feel the weight of someone sitting behind me on the bed. It feels like someone lays down behind me. I'm waiting for an arm to grab me so the person doesn't fall to the floor. No arms come and no one falls to the floor. I put my hand on the spot behind me where the weight was. Nothing there. I'm thinking I must have fallen asleep again. A few minutes later, I feel the weight again sitting then laying down behind me, still no arm. I feel the spot again, still nothing. Creeped out, I wrap my cover closer to me. After a short time, it happens again. This time I sit up and look around, no one there. I sat on the bed telling the air, I know you are here, and it's fine, by me, but don't use my bed when I'm still in it. It did not happen again. TL, doctor. My brother used to sit in a row, with a dog and a cat, and have a conversation with the air above the staircase, telling my parents stuff toddlers couldn't know. I had to tell the air in my room not to use my bed when I was using it. Woke up from a dream and not being able to move anything but my head, so I'm turning my head around and as I look at my desk I see a black silhouette of a woman turning her back on me. I try to close my eyes a few times, but she is still there and all of a sudden this silhouette starts floating towards me and I still can't move my body. I can't turn on the lights or my mobile, nothing. As she was getting closer to my body, just shivers, and I jump on my bed. I woke up and I'm covered in sweat head to toe. Finally managed to turn on my lights, and of course, I left them turned on until the morning. Believe me when I say, going to sleep the next few days was a fucking mess. I was alone at home with my two-year-old one night. He was sleeping in his own bedroom, and I was in mine. I got woken up at 1.30 a.m. by the noise of my wooden bedroom door creaking open. It's unfortunately a very noisy door. I saw a white hand pushing it open, but it was high off the ground, much higher than that of a two-year-old could reach. I called out my son's name, and the hand quickly retracted. After some hesitation, I got out of my bed eventually, half asleep and confused, wondering if it might have been my husband having returned home early. But my husband wasn't in the hallway passage, and the security door at the other end of the hallway was still closed. I then noticed smoke was coming out of my son's dimly lit room. I entered the room and saw that my son was tucked in his bed and fast asleep. Then I spotted the origin of the smoke. The bottom of his bedroom window curtain was somehow inside his nightlight slash bed lamp, which was open at the top, and it had just begun to catch fire, with a tiny flame slowly growing. I pulled out the curtain and quickly suffocated the flame by blowing on it and slapping it. I did not wake my son. I put the bed lamp somewhere out of reach of the curtain. I believe wind came in through the window and blew the curtain so that when it settled back down, it settled on top and inside the lamp. I never found out whose hand that was, and my son the next day was completely oblivious to the events. My husband said it was a guardian angel. There were some other smaller unexplainable occurrences after that. One time my son lost my glasses after playing with them, 
I told him he had to find them or else he would get punished. A while later, some pot lid fell off inside a cupboard with a loud clanging sound, and when I opened the cupboard, my glasses were in there. I told this to the wife of our pastor, and she warned me that there is no such thing as benevolent ghosts, and that it is most certainly an evil presence trying to win our favor. She said she would pray for our house during her next prayer group session. She did, and we never experienced any such paranormal events again. Didn't witness the paranormal event, but while in the Ajaristan province of Afghanistan, intel reports were picking up chatter of an attack. Night of said attack, the eye in the sky is confirming that military-age males are moving and setting up to mollywop us. Well, the attack never happened, and a couple days later, we are hearing reports from locals that there are evil elves, forget the name, in the mountains that kill you. Whatever was up there sure saved my ass, and hence why I always play elf characters on video games. My honest opinion, temperature dropped from low 80s to 30s that night, and those cowards didn't want to freeze. Still, I go with the elf story. Only paranormal, cause I have no way else to explain it. So, I'm seeing a hypnotherapist, and I'm in the middle of a session. They're taking me on a journey into my mind, and I'm climbing a staircase down towards a square building like a control center. It's a long way, but I finally get there and I slowly open the door. Suddenly, I see something black that's hunched over it turns, taking a second to register that I'm there, and then it rushes past me. I instantly awake and catapult up, scaring the shit out of my therapist. Freaked me the fuck out, because whatever it was, it acknowledged I was in the room with it before it fled. It wasn't a case of being a child and finally opening the closet and seeing that there's no monster. No, there was something in there and it saw me. A few years ago, when I still lived with my parents, they had all gone camping for the weekend. I opted to stay home and kept our senile poodle dog home with me. It was pretty hot in the house because it was summertime and I remember leaving my bedroom door open to get better airflow from the fan. Late at night, I was scrolling my phone and I watched this bright blue orb of light come out of the hallway and float right towards my fan and then disappear. I kind of just stared at it in disbelief that I saw what I had saw until my almost blind and deaf dog jumped up from sleeping in the corner of my room and started growling and freaking out at the exact same spot I just watched the orb disappear at. I slept on Skype with a friend and all the house lights on that night. Probably not the scariest, but I was in my living room playing some games and I heard someone whisper something to me. I couldn't figure it out. Then I heard footsteps go down the hall into the bedroom. I walked into the room and saw nothing, and as I was walking out, a picture of me got flung across the room and smashed a window. I stood there shocked for about three minutes or more, trying to figure out what just happened. When I was in seventh grade, we lived in a house built in 1922. It made noises that a house that old would make, creaking, random knocking, etc., but nothing that actually scared me. One night or morning, I woke up and I remember looking at my clock and it was 3.32 a.m. I didn't really think much of it because as I went to turn over to sleep on my other side, I noticed what looked like someone standing in the doorway to my room. I leaned up a bit and looked at what was a little girl in a white dress just staring at me. She was probably between the ages of six and eight years old. I was so tired that I just laid back down and went to sleep. The next day, I remembered what I saw and had a little panic attack. I had to explain to my mom what it was, but she just told me it was a dream. I know it wasn't a dream though, because when I went to bed that night, my clock still said 3.32 a.m. It was a digital clock, but it wasn't keeping time. I had to reset it before going to bed to fix it. We lived in that house until my freshman year of high school. I never slept the same way again, lol. Still have no idea what it was. Once I heard two people gossiping and talking with each other in a whisper or mumbling voices in the back bedroom which was empty. Once I started approaching the room, the voices slowly reduced to null. The room was empty so I returned back to my room, but after an hour or so, I again started hearing these voices, and this time, instead of trying to approach the voices, I started leading my ears to what they were talking about. I could make out that the voices were of two old women who were chatting about my parents. I felt so terrified when I recognized one of the voices and it belonged to my grandmother who recently passed. The next day, I inquired my parents with respect to what I could make out from what I heard yesterday 
and they were shocked as the incident or the matter which was discussed by the voices was something which was known only to my close family members and happened before I was born. Pretty scary experience, and to this date I am trying to find some explanation for this rationally. The night my grandmother died, my mother insisted we go over to her house so she could collect sentimental stuff before our relatives started trashing the place to look for valuables in the morning. Yeah, real nice. I remember walking through the house, and the closer I got to the family room where she died, the colder the house felt. The heat was on and I could see my breath. She had died in her favorite TV chair. I approached the area the chair had been, and I heard her cough. My grandmother had the most awful cough loud enough to make me jump as a kid, and here I was hearing it from this spot. In the morning, we all talked about how one side of the house was freezing that night, and I guess my father heard her coughing too. I've never experienced anything like that again. One night, when I was about 14, I watched the Blair Witch Project on a shitty CRT, and the entire time, I swear, I can see people in the background watching the characters. That really freaked me out at the time, and so I was already on edge. Afterwards, when I went to my room, I finished watching TV and sat in my bed looking around and waiting for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. After a few minutes, my eyes are completely adjusted and I can see everything in my room except for the corner on the opposite side of my room. It's just pitch black. And I'm just staring at it, trying to see into it. Then, over the course of a few minutes, it slowly begins to grow. It's getting bigger and bigger and I'm freaking out. How the fuck is a pitch black shadow growing? and taking over shit I could already see. As it gets closer, I get this like primal instinct, warning me that there's something in the blackness. Eventually, I can feel an emotion coming from it, this intense dread and anger that's being directed at me. After like 30 minutes of staring at this thing too terrified to move, it's finally reached all the way across my room and the blackness begins to envelop my bed. That's when I freak out way too hard, grab the remote, and flood the room with light. Not the last thing to happen that night, and not even convinced it was paranormal, but it's about the closest thing that's happened to me outside of some weird stuff that happens in the house I currently live in. I didn't really have one, but this is my eldest sister Tessa's boarding high school one. My sister went to this Catholic school that my mom, grandma, aunts, a few cousins, and later my elder sister Joy would go to before transferring because of some scandal. There was a bit of an inside joke between the people mentioned above and how many supernatural occurrences would take place. That's just a bit of backstory for you. Now, to the actual story. In the dorm Tessa was in, there would be nights where she would have trouble sleeping. Not a lot, because after around what would feel like 10 minutes, she would drift off the dreamland. But on one of those days, she woke up to find a feminine-looking shadowy figure in what looked to be one of those floor-length dresses looming over her friend, let's call her Jess, watching her sleep. She would rub her eyes, but the woman in black was still there. But when the shadow saw that she was being watched by Tessa, she'd turn in her direction. Tessa didn't move out of fear, smile a big Cheshire grin, but with yellow teeth that seemed to emit some ominous glow in the moonlight since there were some windows there, and almost as fast as she smiled, she would just vanish. No poof, no... Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Nothing. Just a soundless blip. So yeah, that's it. Went to the bathroom at around 3 a.m. Came back to my room to find a creepy figure hunched over my bed. Stared at it for a few seconds before something told me gently but firmly that this wasn't something I was supposed to see and that I should go get a glass of water. Went to get a drink. Waited around for a few minutes until I was awake enough to be rational. Got mad that some spooky bullshit had kicked me out of my own room went back in, half convinced it was a dream, until I realized the book I'd been reading before bed, which I'd left sitting on my pillow before turning in, was now on the floor. I also had an auditory hallucination while on an antipsychotic that Slimer from Ghostbusters kept screaming my name right in my ear. Not paranormal as in spooky, but paranormal as in what the fuck. I was working late night at a hotel was all alone except for a few guests. The kitchen is right across from the front desk, and I heard the big-ass door that keeps people from going in open. After a few seconds, I heard a noise as if the metal utensils had been knocked over and heard the door open again. I went to check, and the utensils rack was slightly moved. It was really heavy, and the utensils were all mixed in the compartments, and I know for a fact the kitchen lady wouldn't do that 
as she was extremely neat. I had gone over there, filming as things always happened, but noises aren't caught in our security cameras. When I saw the video, I filmed the music from the lobby cuts right before I go into the kitchen and comes back a few moments after. Not as if it was paused, but as if the volume had been lowered, which didn't actually happen when I went to the kitchen. We thought of him as a friendly ghost, but it would get really annoying after 10 p.m., I guess because most of the people were in their rooms already. I used to see this girl, and she lived in a small, creepy duplex. Sometimes, at night, she would move into the living room if she couldn't sleep, so I would be in the bedroom by myself. One night, she was in the living room. I woke up randomly in the middle of the night and could feel her beside me. She even let out one of those sounds someone makes when you disturb them when they sleep. Cool, she's back in bed with me. Think nothing of it and try to fall back asleep. As I try to fall asleep, I faintly hear the TV on in the living room. Wait a second. If she's in there, then who's beside me? Fear sets in, and I slowly roll back over and look at her side of the bed. Pitch black. Can't see anything. I shoot up and sprint to the bedroom door, fumbling, trying to find the door handle. Fear turns to panic as I look behind me into the pitch black bedroom. Finally fling open the door, and there she is, on the living room couch, asleep. By this point, I was in full-on panic mode. Had trouble breathing, heart was pounding, all that stuff. We went back in the room and nothing was out of the ordinary. Don't know what I experienced that night. Looking back into the dark room and not being able to see anything was one of the scariest moments of my life. Maybe I was half asleep and imagined her being there, who knows, but it sure did scare the shit out of me.